Hey, this is CJ with Southeast from Guns. Uh, you'll notice I have a lot more hair and a lot easier to deal with. And we'll be happy to make you a lot better deal than some of the guys that have worked here before. Uh, be the new manager here. We're going to do a video on some, some cool stuff today. So let's, let's go on in. on the 637 Smith & Wesson J-Frame. It's 38 Special, single action, double action, uh, air weight. These are, these are great guns because they work. You know, it's hard to argue with that. The only problem is their double action is pretty heavy. It comes in about 10 pounds, a little over 10 pounds whenever I measured it earlier. Um, and that's pretty substantial, especially when you're talking about a gun like this or, or defensive carry, if you use something like, say, the 642, which is its hammerless brother, where you have no other option than to use double action. So today we're gonna go ahead and do a spring kit, do a little trigger job on it. We're gonna do one made by Apex. Apex makes one that they call their duty carry uh, spring kit. It's uh, gonna help out a lot. It's, it's advertised to drop down the weight by about three pounds, which is very substantial on a gun, this size especially. And I'm gonna show you how to do it today with some pretty standard tools some stuff that most people have sitting around in their drawer or can easily get uh, proper size screwdriver bits um, you know this little guy here to maybe capture a spring I might not even use it um, nice mill spec a paper clip and a pair of needle nose pliers or some forceps or something of that nature before installing the apex kit I went ahead and tried the trigger pull on it and measuring it out ends up averaging out at 10 pounds 13 ounces and three shots okay so first thing first if you're going to work on a gun first thing you need to make sure is that it's unloaded obviously that's uh, a concern factor you need to make sure your guns are unloaded before you uh, accidentally shoot yourself and have some video commentator ripping you apart over working on a gun that's not shown as unloaded first thing you're supposed to do take the grips off grips pretty easy just a little allen key Make sure it's a proper size Allen key or you will strip that joker. All right, I'll put that to the side. Next thing, you take your little mill spec paper clip here and you're gonna take it out of its mill spec orientation. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna straighten this guy out right here and you use like your little pair of pliers or something of that nature. In this case, some forceps, put a little bend on the end of it, a little hook. All right, with this being a double single action gun is you can pull the hammer back to your single action desire and you're gonna go ahead and put that little that little paper clip through that little hole in your your trigger spring bar and you're gonna release tension on it so once that's done this little spring is captured so what you'll do is you'll go ahead and lift this guy out of its orientation right here and set it to the side Okay, once that part's done, the rest of it is going to be the scary part that everybody's afraid of on revolvers. So, once you get to this point, you're gonna go ahead and take this first screw out the front. This one is gonna hold your cylinder in. This screw's different than the rest of them. It's gonna be a little bit larger, larger blade size for your bit. And it also has a little detent. I don't know if I can get it on camera, but it's got a little detent that holds pressure on that, that cylinder to keep it in. So we'll set that guy to the side and go ahead, open up your cylinder like you would normally, pull the front out here. That way you don't actually scratch up your cylinder or the frame and set it to the side. Okay, next thing, we're gonna swap bits to the proper size. We're gonna take out these two screws. So we'll go ahead and do that real fast. Set to the side. These two screws are the same, so don't have to really worry about them fitting or keeping up with them on particular side, sides, unless you're dealing with a super high-end Smith & Wesson, super hard to find, something that you just can't replace or something that's uh, older than your grandfather. So to take the side plate off, everybody wants to go in here and pry this joker off. You do not want to do that because you will screw up this alignment here. You can barely see this, the seam where the side plate meets normally. And, and this, this is a regular case. 
but once you start prying on it, you're gonna have this big beat out section through here and you're gonna see a big ugly line from where the side plate meets. So the way you take this thing off, is you take the end of your screwdriver and on the same side of your frame, hit the frame a couple times. Boom, look at that, it come right off. Didn't hurt anything. You also notice that this transfer bar come out. It just kind of kind of floats in here and rides inside this groove inside this side plate. So it's normal for that to come popping out, especially on the double action or the single double action gun like the, the 637 here. The 642 will not have this issue because they do not have a transfer bar because it's double action only. Okay, so it's gonna be kind of hard to show you exactly how this goes, but I went in and put the, the transfer bar back in here to kind of show how this thing works. So basically what this does is that whenever whenever the trigger's at rest, whenever, whenever everything's back in double action mode, it pretty much sits right here, kind of between the frame, the firing pin, and the hammer, so the hammer can't go all the way down. And even if it does go all the way down, it's gonna stop on this transfer bar here. So whenever the trigger is actually pulled all the way through, the transfer bar will come slip down, like you see here, so the gun can fire and go all the way forward. Now say it just slipped off because there's no, it's not sitting in that groove on the side plate anymore. But once you release your trigger and it resets, that transfer bar comes back up, back into the way of the hammer so that you can't accidentally drop the gun and, the, and it fire on its own. That's uh, the purpose of that. So you hear people talk about dropping guns and them going off. It's just not so, especially with something like this. Okay, so now that we've uh, shown what the transfer bar does, we're gonna go ahead and take it out and set it to the side. Okay, next thing that's gonna have to go is the hammer's gotta come out. So the way this is gonna work is that without the cylinder in the gun, your bolt here, your catch that holds your, your cylinder in has got a blocking point on it that's not gonna allow you to pull the trigger through without the cylinder in it. So what you'll have to do to, to get it in the right orientation is to pull back on your bolt. So you'll go ahead and pull back on that. You'll notice the trigger's gonna go all the way through. Now hold the trigger back and you'll notice that there's this little gap right here with the hands fully extended up and the trigger's all the way back that this little hammer can slide sear and everything out. And then you just pretty much pick it up out of the frame. Once you pick it up out of the frame, that's it. You'll set this little so gun So the next the thing side. that's gonna have to go after we remove the hammer is the trigger reset spring and the trigger reset spring housing. So basically all this does is add pressure to your trigger so it can reset and, and go back into its original orientation so you can go up with your follow-up shot. There is unfortunately not a really great way of taking this thing out. Um, so basically what you're gonna need to do is get a screwdriver or a punch or something of that nature. And you'll see this little blue spring right here above this pin. So basically what you're, gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to compress this spring down. And while you do it, go ahead and lift up on the housing. So once you do that, just be careful because that spring is under a pretty good amount of pressure. And see, there you go. That's it. That guy's out, we'll set it to the side. All right, next thing's gonna be the trigger. Trigger's a whole lot more simple than that. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead and pull your hand out. So it basically rides in this groove right here. So you'll see this groove this hand works in. So what you'll do is you go ahead and pull the hand out, out of that orientation, and then you're just basically going to lift up on the trigger and it'll come out on its own. Now, be careful because there is a little little piece right there that just fell out that rides inside this trigger right here. It's kind of hard to see, but that rides up in this little trigger return housing. So we'll set all that to the side. Okay, now that we got the trigger out, really we could have already done this little trigger job here aside from the firing pin. Um, but since we already got it all the way down, we're just gonna show you how to take the gun pretty much completely apart. There's only be a couple things I'm gonna skip and it's gonna be a little sear sprain because quite frankly, you shouldn't need to take that apart anytime really, unless you're doing some really high-end custom work to it. Um, and they're a pain in the butt to get in and out. Uh, same way with the hand spring. The hand spring's kind of a pain in the butt to get in and out too, you know, quite frankly, unless you're having to time this gun or, or do some serious trigger work on, on the trigger itself. No need to really take that apart. So anyways, we'll go ahead and continue out. Um, for, uh, 
for the trigger uh, for the trigger job, the firing pin will be the next thing that you're going to want to do. This has got this little pin right here, and it's not under any kind of real pressure. Um, you could use a pair, a pair of forces, a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, or even a pair of tweezers. So you just pull that straight out, set it to the side. The firing pin will come straight out, or actually fall out on its own if you want to give it a little nudge, see it just fell out. And so did the spring. So you just kind of pay attention. Usually the spring will stay in there and a lot of times you'll have to fish it out. That one just come falling out. Okay, since we're gonna take the gun all the way down, the next thing that we have is gonna be your bolt here. This is what keeps your cylinder in place, keeps it locked in. So the way you're gonna have to take this thing out is you're gonna have to take that screw and this button off. So we'll go ahead and loosen up the screw, which will be pretty easy. It'll come straight off. You can set that guy to the side. Now, the way this thing's retained in here, there's a, there's a detent and a spring inside this little bolt. So when you go wiggling this guy out, you probably want to keep your hand in, in the right orientation just to catch it if, in case it tries to shoot across the room. So you'll just kind of push up on the button on this side. Just push up on it just a little bit. And then you're going to kind of wiggle it out. So basically, you kind of pull it back a little bit, wiggle it out. Look at that. Come out detent and try to fly out on me. Everything's caught and contained. So set everything to the side. Okay, the only thing left in this gun that you could take out, well, there's two things really, um, would be this little Hillary hole lock. You could take that out if you don't like having that, but I'm not gonna show you how to do that. There's 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 videos and there's, there's companies that make little plug kits to take that lock out if you choose to do so. But, you know, that goes against Smith Weston's design and probably actually screw up your warranty with, with Smith & Wesson. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that because we're not gonna do it to this gun. Um, next thing we're gonna take out is gonna be your cylinder stop. So basically this little guy right here is what stops your cylinder whenever you're, whenever it spins. This little guy right there. And it's spring loaded. You'll notice there's a spring right here between the frame and it that keeps it shoved upwards at all times. Now there's, also, not a very great way of doing this. A lot of people will go ahead and like get a get a knife like what I got and depress the spring and wiggle this thing out. You got to hold it in the right place because it's got to clear this pin. It's just a pain in the butt. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat today. So some Smith and Wesson purists are probably not going to like the way this is going to happen. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to decompress that spring a little bit and try to catch the end of it. Once we catch the end of it with their forceps or little needle nose pliers, hard to do it with only having two hands here, but we're gonna do is decompress that spring, get those forceps in there, and hold the spring down. Once we have the spring down, we can orient it in the right spot, and it comes right out. You'll notice that the spring tried to launch out, do it obviously a little bit cleaner than what I just did, but it didn't go far. That's it. Your Smith & Wesson's completely disassembled. Um, that's, that's all you need to do. Um, as far as if you're wanting to go, oh, well, it's not completely disassembled. Your cylinder, your ejector here, all you do is it's reverse threaded. You're going to twist on that guy here. You'll notice that there's going to be a spring, an operation rod, another spring, and then your ejector rod. And this thing come out this side. That's it, that's all the way down. Um, you're never gonna need to do this unless you just have build up underneath, underneath your, uh, your ejector that's causing malfunctions with the gun. That's the only time you'll ever need to do that. And half the time you don't even have to do that. You can just, you can just push the ejector rod out and scrub through there. But that, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, reassembly them. Reassembly is pretty straightforward. It's literally the reverse order of what we've done so far. So the first thing that's gonna, gonna go in is gonna be your cylinder stop. So what we're gonna do is make sure the spring's in there and we're gonna capture that spring again. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in its right orientation, get my little forceps, compress that spring without losing it. And then we're gonna go ahead and start it down here in the frame. Look at that, put it in the frame. Pull your forceps out, make sure your spring is good and lined up. We'll straighten it out a little bit. Boom, there you go. Guess what? It's back in. All right, next thing we're gonna put in is gonna be your, your bolt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and line it up with this hole in the frame. 
And then don't forget this little detent right here. So you're gonna push the detent in just a little bit, just to get her started in the frame. Once we do that, let me find my little tool here. I'm just gonna try to decompress that detent. That way it can keep going down, keep going down, and one more time. There we go. That's that's as far down as so it'll sit in that little channel above this lock, this little Hillary Hill lock. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our finger on top of that and hold a little bit of pressure. And then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our button and screw it here. That way, that way it won't try to slide out or fall out on its own. So what we'll go ahead and do is put our screw on there, make sure we're not cross-threading it, tighten her down, get her to where she stops and go about, a, about an eighth or quarter turn. That's about all you need right there as far as tension goes. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our trigger back in. This is gonna be pretty simple, just like we did before. You're gonna hold the hand back just a little bit so it's out of the way. You're just gonna clear all that and make sure it falls back in that groove. Once you have it in there, pull the trigger back and this little, this little piece right here that I mentioned before needs to fit inside this, this trigger about right there in this groove. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick it up with a pair of tweezers or forceps and we're gonna slide it in that little keyhole. There you go, guess what, it's in there. All right, after that, what we're gonna go ahead and do is start putting in the stuff that's gonna make a difference on your trigger pull. Uh, Apex includes a new firing pin, new firing pin spring. It's gonna have a new trigger reset spring and a new new hammer spring. What we're gonna do is we're gonna so go ahead and replace the uh, firing pin. You'll notice that the factory firing pin has one notch cut in it and the new firing pin has two notches. So you can do it either way on it. It's also a little bit longer. It's hard to really tell in this picture, but it's an extended firing pin. So it's gonna pop that, pop that uh, primer for you really easy. So what we'll go ahead and do just for ease is go ahead and start that spring in the little channel make it look harder than it is and shove it in there make sure it's not sideways or anything and then go ahead and start your firing pin in there okay and it helps just to go ahead and have it kind of oriented in a way that groove is going to line up with this hole. okay so once you get your firing pin in there you're just going to make sure it's kind of oriented in the right direction you're going to depress it with with like your finger and go ahead and just slip it in that hole there look at that nice and simple that's it firing pins in there, make sure you got a little bit of spring tension on it, that's gonna try to come back out, pop back out. You're good, that's it. Okay, so next, after we install our firing pin, we're gonna go ahead and put our trigger reset spring and housing back in. Now this is gonna be your factory one. Factory one's gonna be blue, your your new one, your apex one's gonna be green. So we're gonna take that blue one, put it out of the way. There's not really a direction that this thing has to go in, just slide it in there. Um, again, what we're gonna do is just gonna kind of orient this to where that little notch rides inside that little little detent hole right there. You can hardly see it, but there's a little notch made out there. So what we're gonna do is just try to make sure it kind of rests in there. Now, once we do that, again, just like we did before, we're gonna de we're gonna compress this spring with like a screwdriver, just enough to where we can go ahead and slip it back over that that little post. So once you get a good little grip on it, we're gonna go ahead and depress it. Look there, that's it. It is in there, that's it. Now you should have tension back on your spring so it's gonna reset itself. All right. Okay, so next we're just gonna go ahead and put the hammer back in. Um, remember like we did before, we're gonna make sure that the trigger's all the way back. And don't forget, this guy right here is going to get in your way because it still has that lock. So what you're going to do is pull it, pull that back, pull your trigger back. That way it keeps this lock out of the way of the hammer. So you're going to just going to basically have it in the furthest back position, slide it through that little groove on the hand, and we have got the hammer back in. The final part of your spring kit is going to be a new hammer spring. So this is just going to be a lower power hammer spring. So it's going to attribute to, to your, your weight that you're going to fill in your trigger pull. So you're gonna take your little mill spec uh, paper clip here, you're gonna hold it and you're gonna push down that plunger, release that, and then go up as slow as possible without shooting this spring in this little holder across the room. Go ahead and set your factory spring to the side out of the way. You're gonna also just go ahead and stand this back up on something sturdy. You're gonna do the reverse action there, and you're gonna push down your little keeper. 
Once you get so far, you're gonna find that little hole again and put your little mill spec paper clip back through it. That way it's still contained. Just make sure you got it contained really well. And that's it. You, we're getting to the point of where we're basically about done with this gun. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and put your transfer bar back in here, orient it in the right location, which is gonna be just underneath your your firing pin and in this little this little nipple here, this little detent notch. It's gonna sit in there, it's gonna ride in there. Okay, now we're ready for the side plate to go back in. Now you'll notice whenever whenever we knocked it off earlier, the reason why you do that is because you have this little tongue right here. You can't really see it, but basically that wedges up underneath the frame here and adds retention back here at the top. So the way that that works is that whenever you try to take this side plate off, a lot of times that little tongue will wiggle and, and try to wear out the edges right around here and along with some of these other sides right here. With it being as uh, precision made as Smith & Wesson's normally are, you know, that can really that can really screw up the finish and the fine fitting of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go underneath the tongue and we're gonna go ahead and start it down. Ooh. Then right here, I think we're running in into the hand not fitting in the groove just right. So we'll tap it a couple times, see if she'll go. She isn't going, so we're gonna lift her back out. And we're gonna try it again. If you find yourself forcing it, you're doing something wrong or something isn't lined up right. Look up there, there it goes. And that's just because the hand was just not in the groove the way it was supposed to be. A lot of times all you have to do is just jiggle it a little bit. Okay, so before we put in your hammer spring back in, we're gonna go ahead and put the side plate on, screw it down. And for, for this particular motion, we're not gonna put in your the cylinder just yet. We're gonna save that for last. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hand tighten these screws, if we can hang on to the bit. Put that one in too. And the reason why you wanna go ahead and put these, pin, these screws in is because the side plate's actually functional. So the little posts and, and, and pins you see inside the frame that things are resting on actually rests up against this, this side plate. And without the side plate on it, it if you put the, the hammer spring in it, you can cause enough torsion on those little posts and pins that they'll warp or, or become out of spec or even break them. And we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna do that at all because that'll, that'll ruin your little gun. Okay, now that that's done, what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull this little bolt catch back again so we can we can work the trigger. And we're gonna bring the trigger pretty much all the way back in the hammer too. And you'll notice, if I can get a good close up in here, that on the back of the hammer, there is a little groove. It's hard to see it right here, but there's a little groove about where my finger is that this side of your, of your hammer bar is gonna rest in. So you're gonna to try to line that up as best as you can in there, make sure it gets in that groove. Once we get it in that groove, we're gonna go ahead and let it go forward. And then we're gonna pull it back again now that it's in that groove. And that lined up our, our hammer spring with our, with our frame. So your trigger job is essentially done. All we have left to do is put your cylinder back in and, and your grips. And then we'll measure out the trigger weight and see how well it did. Okay, reinstalling the cylinder. Um, I find the best way to do it is kind of hold this thing just about where it should be oriented in the right direction. Go ahead and slip this on right here and slip this down the back. That way you don't have to worry about the, the cylinder going across the frame or the frame across the cylinder or whatever, what have you to cause scratching or marring or, or being out of spec. So once you lock it back down, we'll go ahead and put our screw with the detent in that last spot. We will change the slot or bit on our screwdriver because that is a different size screw. So what we'll do is go ahead and screw that down put a little tension on it, you'll feel it start to catch and have a little bit of resistance because that spring and detent, but that's it. 
All we have left now are the grips, which are pretty cut and dry. There's not a lot to those. Obviously, just get your screw. Slap one side on, make sure it lines up, fits on that little roll pin. Do the same thing with the opposite side. And then just tighten her back down. And what we'll do is just put just a tiny little bit of tension on it just to make sure they don't try to come off and your trigger job is done. All right, now that we've done the trigger job on it, we're gonna go ahead and measure it out and see what we can get and see how well this thing worked. So let's try double action. Seven pounds, 10 ounces. Pretty substantial. Seven pounds, three ounces. Try again. Seven pounds, four ounces. One more time. Uh, That's probably a bad rating. So I would say that it's probably averages about seven pounds, six ounces uh, with minus this little four, four pound. Uh, All right, we'll go ahead and try a single action. We weren't really uh, worrying about it as much earlier because it's been a defensive gun, but I, I measured it earlier and it was going between about two and a half to three pounds on, on your average single action trigger pull. So we'll try this, see what changes it to. One pound, seven ounces. Let's try a couple more. One pound, six ounces. One more time, see what we get average wise. One pound, seven and a half. So your average is gonna be one pound, seven ounces, which is pretty substantial for something like this. Um, I definitely su suggest it, hopefully, uh, Hopefully this video has taught you a little bit about how the inner workings of these guns are. A lot of people get get over concerned about working on these guns because it's kind of like a clock. Once you open it up, every every piece works against another piece. It can be a little tricky. So there you have it. That's that's all it takes to to put you in a nice spring kit and a J Frame Smith. Um, this is the end of our day, and and unfortunately I don't have it here to show you because I've already sold the gun. That people like those trigger jobs on them. Uh, like I said, it's the end of the day, so uh, I don't know what you're still doing here. Why don't you get on out?